Again, we would just like to give a personal word of thanks to all that have come again today to the Drive-In Gospel Meeting. We thank you for coming and we trust that you'll be blessed for being here at the meeting this afternoon. Now I would like to read a story in the Old Testament that's found in the book of Exodus in chapter number 12. In the book of Exodus in chapter number 12. And I would like to read there these words. And it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Then I would like us to read just another little phrase in chapter number 13 and verse number 3. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which he came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of the hand of the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no more leaven be eaten. And I would like us to read with that in the New Testament, please, in John's Gospel, John's Gospel in chapter number 1. John the Baptist is speaking here and says, In the next day John seeing Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Down in verse number 35 it says, And again the next day after John stood, and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. And we do trust that God would bless the reading of his precious word this afternoon. You know, dear friend, we have commenced into another year. It's hard to believe where 23 went to. It seemed to go so fast and so quickly. And we've entered into another year. And we're in the first Lord's Day of another year. And you've maybe got a calendar. And if you haven't got a calendar and want one, there's calendars in the lorry. You can get one after the meeting. But you've maybe got a calendar and you've hung it up on your wall in your house. Or you've got a diary and you've opened it. And you started to put things that you're to do in 2024 onto your calendar. Or you've written them into your diary. Appointments that you have to keep. Places you have to go to. And you've wrote them down for to attend to in the future. But dear friend, I would just like us to think today of the children of Israel and they're down in Egypt. And in chapter 6 it tells us that they were in bondage in Egypt and they were in the burden, they were, they were in burden in Egypt because Pharaoh had placed great restrictions upon these people and the taskmasters was hard on these people. And here was a people and they're down in the land of Egypt. And they've been down there for 430 years they were down in the land of Egypt. And here we see these people and God is going to deliver these people. And God is going to bring them out of this land of Egypt. And he's going to deliver them. And these people are going to know something of being brought forth out of that bondage. And brought forth from under those burdens. You know, dear friend, I would just like to say to you today that you're under, a bond, you're under bondage. You're bound by Satan's captive chains. And the devil is blind in the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine in unto them, and they should be saved. Dear friend, you and I were born in sin and shaven in iniquity, and in sin did our mothers conceive us. And we went astray as soon as we be born. And dear friend, that is why there needs to be a change in life's little experience. These people were going to make it, these people were going to find a great change. There was going to be a great deliverance for these people. Dear friend, there's a great deliverance for you today through the one that died for you at the place called Calvary. You can know your sins forgiven. You can know peace with God. And your soul will be delivered from the judgment of God for all eternity. Dear friend, here was these people and God speaks to these people and God speaks to Moses 
unto Aaron, and he says to these people, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. There was going to be a date placed in their calendar that they would never forget. A date and a calendar that they would never forget. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Dear friend, here was a people and they were going to know deliverance from bondage. They were going to be freed from the burden and the taskmasters in Egypt. Dear friend, I wonder this afternoon, has anyone come to this drive and meeting and you would like to be saved? You would like to be free from your sin? You would like to know heaven at the end of life's little journey and your soul be saved and be with Christ for all eternity? Dear friend, we're glad to be able to tell you today that there is a Savior that left the splendors of heavenly glory, came into this world that is hands and made, went to the place called Calvary, and upon that center cross, he died for your sins, and he died for mine. Dear soul, there's no need for you to perish. There's no need for you to miss heaven today, because the sinless Savior died. My sinful soul is counted free, for God the just is satisfied to look at him and pardon me. Dear soul, these people were going to get a date that they would ever, ever remember. Dear friend, I wonder as you look back on life's little history and the years that have slipped by so quickly, I ask you, dear friend, has there been a moment in those days that are past that you have trusted Christ as your Savior? If not, dear friend, this will be a great day in your experience. The 7th of January 2024 will be a great day for you, dear friend, the best day in your life's experience if you came as a guilty sinner and trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal Savior. These people, dear friend, they were told to take a lamb and what were they to do with that lamb? They were to take it on the 10th day. They were to keep it to the 14th day of the month. The 14th day of the month, they were to kill the lamb. And they were to take his blood. And they were to put it in a basin. And that blood was to be taken. And they got a bunch of hyssop. And it was to be taken and put in the two side posts. And the upper lintel where they were. And God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Here were people, dear friend, not only under the burden of sin and under the burden of judgment, but here were people, dear friend, that were saved through the blood of the Lamb. Dear friend, those of us that are saved today, it's just the same. It's not the blood of a, a Lamb like Israel did this day. But dear friend, as we read in John's Gospel in chapter 1, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Dear, dear friend, these people, they had to take that lamb, and they kept that lamb, and day by day they would look at it. But dear friend, the day came when that lamb had to die, and that lamb's blood had to be shed, and that was put on the two side posts and on the lintel of the houses where they were. Dear friend, they closed their door that night and they went inside that house that night and they were sure. Why? Because they were sheltered with the blood of the Lamb. That was the provision that God had made for them. Dear friend, God was going to come in in judgment that night but those that had that blood applied to the doorposts and in the lintel of the houses, God says, I will pass over you. Every other house in Egypt that night, there was one person dead. God's judgment was seen that night. Dear friend, God had spoken over and over again to Pharaoh, and he wouldn't let the people go. And dear friend, this was the final moment, and this was the beginning of a great time for these people. This was the beginning of months. This was the first month of the year to them. And dear friend, these people that night, they took the blood and they applied it and they went inside 
and the blood that sheltered him from the lamb that was slain. That lamb was roast with fire and they ate the lamb inside and they had something they had something inside and they had something outside and they were safe and they were secure and there was something to satisfy these people. Dear friend, I ask you today as you've journeyed down through life's little history has there ever been a moment when you have sheltered beneath the blood of the cross of Christ? Has there been a moment, dear friend, you have trusted the man of Calvary with your precious soul and your sins were forgiven and you knew of a certainty you were sure of heaven at the end of life's little journey? Here was a people and they were able to go inside and they knew that all was well because God had said it. Dear friend, you don't have to take our word for it. We hold the precious word of God. Read the Bible, dear friend. And the word of God will tell us, dear friend, how that God sent his son into this world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Dear friend, salvation was offered to these people on the basis of blood that was shed. Salvation is offered to you today on the basis of the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter reminds us that we're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Dear friend, we sometimes sing in the hall, what can wash away my stain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Dear friend, these people were secure. They were safe. And you know it says? They were to remember this day. They were to remember this day. Dear friend, you may think to yourself, I got saved the way back and I can't remember the day. Now it not matter. You remember the time when you got saved. A moment in life's experience when you trusted Christ as your own and personal saviour. These people, dear friend, will look back to that night and it would be a, a memory that would remember year by year throughout the generations. Dear friend, we're glad to be able to tell you today there's many in front of me today and they've trusted Christ many years ago. Their precious souls are saved and they're redeemed with the precious blood of Christ and they're sure of heaven at the end of life's journey. We're not dependent on our feelings or what our works or what we may do. Dear friend, we're dependent on the precious blood of Christ, the Lamb of God that shed his blood at Calvary. Dear friend, I ask you this afternoon, is there a moment in your little experience that you've trusted Christ? But dear friend, I trust that there's never been that moment. That this afternoon on the 7th of January, and a beautiful winter's day that you may come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal Savior. Your sins be forgiven. Sure of heaven for all eternity. To know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. To lay your head upon your pillow at night, put out your light and know all's well to the never-ending ages of eternity. Dear soul, you and I this little scene of time that we so much love and enjoy will soon be over and gone forever. And dear friend, time ends and then eternity. Tommy quoted the little poem last Lord's Day. What know I of this coming year and what it holds for me, whether its close will find me here or in eternity. Dear soul, this afternoon, we're glad to be able to say to you tonight, as John said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John looked upon the Lord Jesus Christ as he walked, and those are the words that he said. John said, I must decrease, he must increase, and I must decrease. And John was a forerunner of our blessed Lord, the one that pointed to him on the banks of the Jordan. And John said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Dear friend, that blessed one, he'd been there, he'd been on the scene of time for 30 years at that time, and then there'd be, 30, or there'd be three 
over three years of public ministry that he would go about his public ministry. And then, dear friend, it would be Calvary. We think of all that the Savior did in those years and how busy he was in the service of his master. But, dear friend, there was one thing that he had come into this world to accomplish, and that was that he might go to Calvary and shed his precious blood in order that we may be redeemed, in order that our souls may be saved, and that we may fill a place in heaven when life's little journey is over. Dear friend, today, I urge upon you, if you know not the Saviour, that you'll come to the place which is called Calvary, just outside the city of Jerusalem, on that hillside. It says, and when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. We sometimes sing, lifted up was he to die, and his finished was his cry. Now in heaven exalted high. Hallelujah. What a saviour. Dear friend, this blessed one had come. He came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I ask you this afternoon, is your precious soul saved? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and as your personal saviour? Or has there never been a moment when you have trusted him? Dear friend, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Upon that cinder cross at Calvary, between those two malefactors, our Lord Jesus Christ was lifted up there. And his hands were nailed and his feet were nailed to that cross. A crown of thorns was on his brow. His back was bleeding for they had beaten it. They smote him with their hand. They spit, spit upon his face. Dear friend, upon that cross, the Saviour would bear our sins in his own body upon the tree. Away years before he came, it was told, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Dear friend, this afternoon, that blessed one cried these words at Calvary. It is finished. Dear friend, we're glad to tell you tonight. Today, if a finished work that was accomplished outside the city of Jerusalem on the hillside of Calvary, when God's beloved Son, dear friend, cried triumphantly, It is finished. Sell forever sins tremendous claim. Glory to Jesus, blessed be his name. Dear friend, you need not perish in your sins and go out into a lost eternity. For dear friend, there's only two places on the other side. When we leave this scene of time, if our soul is saved, it will be heaven for all eternity. If we die in our sins, the Lord Jesus Christ could say, Where I am, thither ye cannot come. Dear friend, there is an awful place of woe. There is a hell where you must go if you die unsaved, but oh, when he come. Dear friend, the Lord Jesus said these words when he was here. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Dear friend, the Savior longs to bless you today. Salvation has been provided for you. Just as Israel that day sheltered beneath the blood of the Lamb. Dear friend, you get shelter today in the person and put your trust in the man that died at Calvary. What, does it, what did the man in Luke 16 say to Paul and Silas? Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Dear friend, we trust that you may trust this Savior today. The man that died at Calvary. Dear friend, that blessed one that had come into the world to be the Savior. That one that died on that cinder cross. That one, dear friend, that was taken down from the cross. That one who was wrapped in the clean linen and laid in that stone hewn tomb. Dear friend, we're glad that that Lord's Day morning, he rose triumphant from the grave. And we present to you a living Savior today at God's right hand. 
One dear friend who bears the marks of Calvary. One dear friend who is seated on the throne of God in heaven. And one dear friend who have been reminded already that he's coming back again. And he's coming back for those that have trusted him as their own and personal saviour. Dear soul, this afternoon, would that this seventh day of January 2024 might be a day that you'll write a wee, a wee note in your calendar or open your diary and write a wee, a wee note in your diary. And dear friend, even you only wrote one word. Even you only wrote one word. Even you only wrote the word save. Dear friend, just those that word save. Just to know that there was a moment when you trusted Christ as your own and as your personal saviour. For dear friend, to leave time to go into eternity and not be saved. Dear friend, is to wait and is to wail and gnash your teeth in a lost eternity. I trust, dear friend, that you'll be wise this afternoon. Consider these people that took that blood of that lamb in the basin and applied it to the two side posts in the London of the houses where they were. They sheltered beneath that house that night and knew all was well. And dear friend, there was not a house that had the blood applied that there was one person had died. But all the other houses, there was one dead. Dear friend, we point you to Calvary tonight. We point you to the cross of Christ today. We point you to the Saviour, the sinless Son of God who came from heaven to bear your sins and my sins in his own body upon the tree. And there, dear friend, we present him as the only Saviour. We're glad to tell you today, dear friend, he's willing to save you. And more than that, we're glad to tell you he's able to save you. For he's able to save to the uttermost all that come unto God by him. Dear soul, it would be a great day to be sheltered, sheltered and safe and secure from the judgment that's coming. This world is right and fast for judgment. There's things happening in the world today that are pointing forward to the coming again of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear soul, make sure and be ready. Be ye also ready. For such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Dear friend, he is coming, and we're glad that he's coming for us. And we're glad that we have this blessed hope, this blessed hope that illumines with beams most cheering it's the, the days of night. Dear friend, what a privilege just to know that all's well for eternity. And to rest your head tonight and know that your soul is saved and to know that heaven will be your eternal home. I trust that God will bless you. I trust that you might behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. When he was uplifted at Calvary, he took your sins, he bore your judgment, he bore my punishment. And dear friend, your soul can be saved today because he has paid the price. He has finished the work. He has satisfied the claims of God. And dear friend, that blessed one longs to bless you, longs to save you, longs that you might fill a place in heaven. And dear friend, there's no need to perish because the sinless Saviour has suffered for you at Calvary. We trust that God will bless his word and we'll just close in a moment's prayer. Heavenly Father, we bow in thy presence again. In the worthy and precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank thee, our Father, for the one that left the splendors of glory. The one that knew where he was coming to. The one that knew what our Father lay before him. The one that our Father would pay the price for our sins upon the cross. The one that would be, suffer, be lifted up between heaven and earth. The one that would suffer in Calvary. We thank thee, our Father, for the price that was paid. He shed his precious blood. And our Father, we just pray that someone today may come to know this blessed one as their own and personal saviour and start on their way to heaven and home. Uh, for life's little journey. Father, we just commend each one that has heard thy word today. Others that will maybe listen to it later, we pray to bless them as well. And our Father, through the preaching of the gospel in this land tonight, that souls will be saved, that new names will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And our Father, 
uh, work done for the great never end of ages of eternity. We ask these mercies and Saviour's name. Amen. We thank you again for coming and trust that God will bless his word for you.